Be sure to go to FlipSideGaming.com and use promo code 6 for 10% off on orders over $10. Do the same with the Grizzly Gentleman, 10% off at checkout on your fantastic beard products. Or you could shop via the TCG Player affiliate link in the description down below to help support the show. And last, but of course not least, you can go to Grey Viking Games with the uh, affiliate link below to pillage some sweet arena codes. What is up, Planeswalkers? Theric 6 back with part 2 of the MTGA Assistant uh, sponsored video. This is a sponsored video by uh, MTGA Assistant. Um, it's a program I've been using for a long time, so it's a little AP here. It's my deck tracker, and today I'm going to talk about um, how I use this specific deck tracker to help me build decks, uh, help me decide on sideboarding, and then, of course, uh, help me actually sideboarding. I... Help. It helps build and use the sideboard. So, first things first, let's hop over into the decks. Now, I'm making a historic deck. Uh, you, you can probably see that uh, most of my decks are variations of Bolas. Uh, and then there's like some random stuff. Uh, it's, it, it's mostly Death and Taxes and Bolas. That's pretty much it. So, if I want to make a new deck, let's go over here. Uh, now, I could, for what it's worth, I could go into Collection. I could do the uh, the deck advisor, which is what I uh, showed you all uh, previously. I can go over to historic best of three. Uh, look at these. I can check this and say, okay, I own all the cards for this. Let's let's go ahead and go to metagame, historic best of three. In this, we can see a little bit about how uh, the meta is shifting. Um, we can see uh, tournament reports as well. Um, but let's just go with this. This is kind of what we expect to see on the ladder. And I believe the pool that this is drawn from is platinum and above. Um, I, I know that I'm orange. I don't know why I'm orange. <laughs> I don't know why anything happens anymore. Um, but yeah, so, so we can kind of see uh, what Platinum and Above players are doing. I don't want to play this. It's super boring. I don't think I've played Gruul Aggro with um, Burning Tremissary. So we can kind of get a look at the deck here, and this kind of pops out. We can see, well, this is this is a version for sure. We have one that's similar win, win rate, but it's from today. So, you know, it, it's more up to date. Six days ago. One one day ago, 64. Yeah, let's go with the 66. Kind of me in the middle. Let's do this. And it'll, um, we got, we got some changes across the week. So we do get some information, but we see this is definitely different. This is definitely a different version than the, the one we last looked at. But I think that I do like this in general. I, I want to modify the sideboard a little. So we can just, from here, export, MTG Arena. Copy clipboard, bot, bing, import. Bada boom. And because I already have the cards, I have it. So, um, assisted... Gruel. I don't know how to spell. Shut up. We're, I'm keeping it like that. So we got assisted Gruel. Okay. So we have a Gruel deck here. And in general... I like I like the main deck. I think um, for the the nonsense I'll be doing with uh, with Grixis or with uh, Gruul, I think this is fine. I don't I don't love the sideboard. Okay, so the reason why is if we go back here to metagame, best of three. I'm seeing that the colors artifact is is a little down. I personally haven't seen a lot of color colors artifact, um, so I don't know if we need a full a full set of three abra abrades. And three th uh, br thrashing Bronodon. I can't speak human words. Like, I don't know if we need all three of those. Right? So I'm going to make some modifications. I I'm going to go ahead and cut cut two for now. Okay, hop back in. Um, we got some Saltai mid-range. Now you can move this around, which is great. And Saltai mid-range. We have an extra Ember Cleave. Look, I'm not going to play with the extra Ember Cleave. Um, some Sacrifice stuff. So we do still have a little bit of... Uh, Little, little bit of need for uh, the scavenging uses in the, in the sideboard. We got like mono red, mono black, blah, blah, blah. What I want here, though, what I want here, because this this kind of takes um, Azorius Control into consideration, especially considering the fact that we are just kind of an aggro deck. But I want to have, and this this might mess up my collected company a little bit, but considering I'm getting rid of one abrade anyway, I, I want, I want the, the red-green enchantment. Whose name I just do not recall ever. Uh, two men and champ Cinderbinds. I want some Cinderbinds. One of the big reasons I want Cinderbinds here is it uh, plays very nicely with Burning Tree Emissary. But also, it's just, it's a way that I can still deal with artifacts or enchantments. 
So, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of getting that a braid value and the thrashing run it on value, but it also punishes the white blue control, right? I want to be ha able to have some sort of play against those. Um, and if, if I'm looking at this, what is it? Mono red gobos. I mean, gobos shouldn't be terribly hard, right? Like against gobos, we just beat them to death. Because this iteration of Goblo, Gobos, and you can actually see, like, what the common iteration of these decks are, right? Like, it's not just, oh, I have to see the deck list, I can, or the deck name, I can go in and say, this this is very much a more combo-centric version of Goblins, right? We're seeing main deck to Iron Craig feats. You know, this is very much not meant to be a, a usual play Goblins and just kill people, overwhelm them. This is a combo-oriented one. And if it's a combo-oriented one, we can kind of just go under them and beat them to death. Um, we got the blue-white enchantments. Cindervines could potentially help with that. Do I want... If Max Bonecrusher Giants... Galliard, Land of Elves... Hmm. What would I, what would I want here? Mono Blue Tempo... Ooh. Shatter Skull... I'm a little worried about Tempo. I'm I'm actually very worried about Tempo. Unfortunately, I don't know if there's any card that can help me against Tempo. I'm just gonna put a braid back. But I think I think adding Center Vines here is very good. So So this is the deck we're gonna work with. Um I made some modifications. I'm I'm totally fine with this main deck. But another another thing that you can do, and another thing that I do, is when I'm in here, when I'm looking at these decks, right? It, it gives you one of the most recent versions, right? And also, you can, as, as I showed, you can kind of click on these to see what are other people playing. You know, what have other people been playing? We see some Voltaic Brawlers. That's not in that's not in the version I have. This one has all of the Bonecrusher Giants in the main, but it, um, it also is running one fewer Questing Beasts. It's running these. It's running this in the main. Rampaging Ferocidon is quite interesting. Fewer lands, but that also means that they're running fewer Remnant Ruins. Uh, you see kind of some of the other things here. They have some cages. I'm not too worried about uh, graveyard stuff uh, right now. But you can kind of see the other things that are that people are playing with. And you can kind of see... Oh, let's see. Let's do nine days ago. <clears throat> you can also see based on like what people are playing a while ago. So there's some primal might six days ago, but notice this this win rate is lower than the what we have right now. I was going to die; something was in my throat. Anyway, so this is the deck. I like it. Let's go ahead and hop in to a best of three game. And one of the other reasons I picked Gruel is because Gruel is relatively fast, and I want I want to essentially just use this video to showcase um, how I use um, the assistant in making decks making sideboards, and of course, using the sideboard and using the, the actual tracker function, because that's the thing that I do the most, is I use the tracker function. This hand is pretty bad. I can very easily keep his hand, and I'm honestly just going to get rid of that, because I don't need it. We're going second, unfortunate. Here, we can just see, we have a percentage of land left, 34. Um, we have 66% non-land. Play our Pell Collector. And it even will tell you the number you have left. So I have three out of four of my Burning Tramissaries left. Uh, three out of four Pell Collectors, etc., etc. And you can have the settings change such that... Uh, the, the settings. You can have the settings change so um, if none are left in the library, you can just hide them from it. I personally prefer to keep them there. Uh, it just helps me kind of remember. It just helps me remember, like, actually visually see what's in my deck, because I might forget. Me no smart. Uh, I'm going to haste. It uh, looks like you're going against some sort of uh, Luris nonsense. Um, and then, of course, what, what's really nice, what I really like about this is that I can look at my sideboard during the game. Where I can think, okay, so my opponent is on Abzan... Um, Shoot. Uh, I mean, we're definitely going to attack in. I don't think my opponent is going to block, though. 
At the very least, I don't think they should. Oh, they're going to. All right. That's fine. We'll kill this. And then I will play my ruin. So, I really like this because during the game, I can already start thinking about what do I want to bring in, right? If, if we're going up against a Luris deck, right? This is a deck that maybe cares about the graveyard to some extent, but it's also, we recognize it's a token deck or a counters deck. We also know that because they're playing Luris, they're very, all right, that's actually fine. Um, they're very likely to have relatively few creatures that have a decent sized CMC, right? That they're just very unlikely to do that. I actually could have kept that in my hand, but I want to be able to use Remnap Ruins at some point. Um, so, like, a Braids might be fine. Um, we might want the Scoozes. Probably going to want the Bone Crusher Giants. So I can already, like, start thinking about that. And another thing is that I don't have to keep track of everything my opponent is doing per se. Uh, I'm absolutely just going to attack with everyone. With Remnap, you kind of just want to get your opponent to a certain point and then kill them. That's very ballsy of my opponent. But yeah, so here I get to see all the things that they've... That I've seen so far. And this helps once you get to, like, uh, sideboarding and game three and stuff. Conclave Mentor. So yeah, so I definitely want to bring in the Giants and the Abrades. Because it's, it's just removal. That was a mistake. Okay, I didn't top deck a land, but I I essentially get a free attack here. No matter what, I'm going to kill one of their creatures. We got 31.3% uh, land, but the thing is they're on two. So unless they have a way to gain, I mean, I guess they have Luris. They are really close to dying. And we do have to attack here. Now, they could do this. But I would be... Less surprised if they just traded. <laughs> yep, they're gonna just trade. Sometimes your opponents make weird decisions. Okay. So, as I said, I already want the Abrades. I already want the Bone Crusher Giants. Right? So, now... Instead of, like, using a lot of my time on what do I need to bring in, I get to think, what do I want to take out? And I can be helped by that, because I can see here, like, yeah, sure, I can go to view battlefield, right? I can I can do this. But it's a lot easier just to have the, the entire list here, instead of needing to be like, alright, this is the stuff in here, gotta keep track of this, gotta do all that. A nice, convenient list, right? So, in this convenient list, um, I'm noticing that it, the only removal that they've had so far has been sorcery speed. Okay. Do I want Shatter Skull Smashing? I probably still do. I'm I'm a weirdo and I like don't like Embercleave. So part of me wants to just get rid of Embercleave. Make the deck a little less bursty and a little bit more um playing to the board. Because the thing is if they get going, they're going to outpace my creatures. So I need to not necessarily play the control, but I need to make sure that I have the ability to just kill their things. Um, I love Oncrop Crasher here because it means that uh, I can kind of get in under them. Questing Beast is still fine. Um, although without the Embercleave, it's maybe a little, a little bit worse, not a lot. Um, we didn't really see any Graveyard shenanigans besides likely Luris. So I'm actually kind of confident in getting rid of the Scoozes here. But of course, I could be incorrect. We might get more cards that illuminate more um, for my next sideboarding. Uh, I'm keeping this. This is actually a stupid hand if um if I can get it going. Like if my Pell Collector stays around, ooh. That's gonna be good. Ooh, you have a Pell Collector of your own, I see. By the way, if you all see screen tearing, I'm sorry. I d it started recently, and I have no idea why. It's not just um when I'm playing games, it's just like even YouTube has screen tearing and I just don't understand. All right, so that's going to get large, unfortunately. OK, 
Okay, so we'll emissary. And we'll emissary. And I could bone crusher giant. I guess actually I should have attack first. Mate. No, cause, eh, eh, I don't know. Um, so I could bone crusher giant to kill this, or I can Lenor elf to hopefully get a collected company next turn. Uh, the fact that they went into this is pretty unfortunate for me. Bone crush their face. Bone crush the winding constrictor. Get through for two. I think I'm gonna go with the Lanor Elf. Um, it's a slower, it's a slower line, but I think it will hopefully um, add up in the the long game. Knight of the Ebon Legion, Pelt Collector. Would I be willing to double block the Pelt Collector? Yeah, I would. On Crop Crasher. Yeah. Exert Attack. Two attacks. You can't block. My opponent only has two cards. I have a couple Bone Crusher Giants. My opponent. So we also see like uh, we've seen two Puck Collectors, right? So that's another thing. Um, we've seen two Agadims under Crypt. Now, for what it's worth, this is across two games. But you can still kind of get a bit more of a sense of maybe this person is playing a certain number of these cards. So they're down to 14. This can't uh, attack next turn. That's fine. Um, I'm fine racing here. Um, so if they want to just, like, attack all in. I mean, not all in, obviously. But if they just want to attack with, like, these two, I'm, I'm going to let them through. Because I want this to die, and I can kill that relatively easily with this. Notably... They don't have white mana here. Yeah, if they, uh, this has this goes up to yeah five toughness unfortunately. Uh, so we're just gonna not block. Doesn't gain life like no, it gains death touch. So sure, this is gonna get uh, what two counters? Yeah. Another collected company. Very unfortunate. Very very unfortunate for me. Um, I think we just attack with these. As I said, we are just trying to race. Interesting. So the Pell Collector is going to go up to three. Unless I want to just hit my opponent in the face. So I can kill this Pell Collector, but it triggers this Pell Collector. My opponent could be on seven. Next turn, I can Oncrop Crasher again. I'm gonna pass the turn, actually. Their Maelstrom Pulse was made slightly worse because of Burning Tremissary. I would love for them to Maelstrom Pulse this. A Scooz. Scooz is not good. Goose is very not good. Now see, the one, yeah, I was about to say, the one trigger attack would be very strange. Just attack with that. I think I had to just target their face. This is nice. Only one creature. Attack. Make it so that this can't block. Yeah. 
Oh, see, that's not what I expected. I can't actually kill it, really. No, it's... This is worth two mana attacking face. This is only worth one... Or two life, I should say. Um, exert. Attack. Why didn't this get a counter on it? Oh, because I didn't lose four! <laughs> uh, we attack like this. Make it so this can't block. It's probably block, block. Attack like this. I mean, if I can just kill the one extractor, I'm fine with that, I think. Sure. I don't trust the game. I guess I should have done that before. Yeah. So I need to win off the collected companies. Ah, oh, but I have to block here. Budge. I forgot about the fact that I have to block. I need top deck land. Another schools. Well, that is not great. Yeah, unfortunately... No, there's no way I can actually block here. So I actually shouldn't have showed them that. Okay. They get quite large. Maybe I do need Emberleaf. <laughs> Clothis, uh, Clothis, I think it would be an overreaction. I think I do want the Death Touch. Um, I'm going first, which does make a huge difference, don't get me wrong. Uh, do I see anything else that I really am concerned about? Not really. Like, I don't think it's correct to fight over the graveyard. You might be wondering why I, I was talking about bringing the Embraid so heavily for the second game, and then I'm deciding to take it out. It's because I want, since I'm going first, I want to go back on the I'm going to go under them plan. This is not a good hand for doing that. This is also not a good hand for doing that. But I do think I have to keep it. I can shock that in next turn. If they play a thing I want to kill, I kill it. Otherwise, I hit them in the face. Alright, so yeah, I'm going to kill this. Then on crop crasher next turn. Do I want a spellbreaker first? I don't know. Look, Let's look at the tracker. Would there be a reason to do one over the other? I'm not sure that there would be. The main thing I'm thinking of is Maelstrom Pulse. 
but it's likely going to be Crasher into Spellbreaker anyway. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure it matters. We get a nice free attack here. I can play this tap next turn if I would like to. Could even just potentially play the Bone Crusher Giant here. That wouldn't be bad. It's possible I should have actually played the Bone Crusher Giant last turn. Let's see. What would I like? I mean, obviously, just Burning Tremissary is just always nice to draw, frankly. A Scooze? I can't kill that. Because this needs double red. Would it be fine if it traded? I don't think so. I think that I want to do this. Am I fine with a trade on that? I think I am. I think the Scoos can probably gain more than three life across the game if I don't deal with it immediately. And I have another one. Obviously, I would have preferred if Gruul Spell Spellbreaker was the thing that was out. That's that's absolutely fantastic for me. They had to spend their entire turn and two life to get to get rid of that. This is also quite good. Something that I just have access to. We're going to go ahead and play the Spellbreaker here. We're just going to haste it up. We want to... Since we have this Remnant Ruins now, we want to just get under. We want to get under them. <laughs> That's just rude. Down to eight... If I can if I can take them to two next turn, then we can potentially just win. Not what I wanted to see, unfortunately. I can I can put them down to four. But I need them at two, not four. Yeah, I was about to say that would just be a terrible attack. Okay. So this is better. Oh, I can do both. All right, cool. Um, they should be dead. Uh, attack and exert. And attack. Tap this. So this puts them to two. They have to gain life here or they just die to my Remnant Ruins. Uh, let's see if they have another Scoos. Um, we've seen two total Scoos from them. Uh, and we've seen that over the course of uh, one, uh, one game. I think last game we saw two Scooses. So, that is not it, Chief. That does not do it. We kill with Remin Ruins. It doesn't matter, friend. Oh, you know what? Just, uh, just for the rubbins, we're going to hit him with this. Boom. And then you have a game summary. We have a little bit more of our uh, our opponent's deck information. I can't click on it right now. That's fine. It happens sometimes. It's okay. So that's how I uh, I use MTG Assistant to help me make decks. Uh, more importantly, make sideboards, and most importantly, uh, how I actually use it to track the games. Let's let's go. There's there's technically one more thing. Uh, collect? No, not collect. where am I going? Uh, statistics. That's that's the thing I was looking for. My opponents. This was my my very last opponent. At Cadbury. Thirty five seconds ago, and I can view their approximate match. So here we have Absent Aggro. This is the cards that we revealed from our opponent, and I kind of talked about this last time. But it's really nice that you can you can say, hmm, my opponent played a really cool deck. I don't know exactly what it is, and. For what it's worth, the assistant's not going to tell you exactly what it is, but it will allow you to go in and say, 
this is what the assistant thinks it is, I'm going to play this, right? I, I can go ahead, copy the deck list, and immediately uh, uh, get value on that. Uh, you also get some information about the metagame, and then we have some t statistics, blah, blah, blah. Uh, boop. Boop. Yeah, so this, once again, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, uh, uh, MTGAA uh, Assistant, MTG Arena Assistant. That is this little cool little A in the description down below, as well as the pinned comment, there will be a link uh, to download this. I, I use this. Like, this is, this is a sponsored video. I use this. I've been using this. Trust me, I love it. I, I've seen, I've looked at other, uh, um, trackers. I don't like them. I like this one. It does all of the things I want it to do and more. But yes, uh, MTG, MTGA assistant. I, for what it's worth, I just call it the Aetherhub deck, deck tracker. Technically. It has a specific name, it's MTG Assistant, but um, it does a bunch of awesome stuff, and I definitely implore you to check it out uh, in the description. Uh, the more people who use it, the better it becomes, because they listen to people's feedback. Awesome stuff. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, uh, like, um, subscribe, and check out the link in the description.